Hello and welcome to the fourth video on powerful writing to gain influence, avoid miscommunication, and hence save costs to yourself, your business, or your organization. This is the third video on writing simple and direct sentences, and today's topic is avoid noun clusters. A bit of a recap before that. Remember, sentences are clearest, most forceful, and easiest to understand if they are simple and direct. If instead sentences are complicated and not direct, the reader is slowed down and even confused. So far we have seen two simple techniques on how to make sentences simple and direct. These techniques are make topic the subject of the sentence and move action into the verb. Links to the videos corresponding to those techniques are given in the description beneath this video on YouTube. But what do we have in store today? Suppose your friends want to know what your work is about and you show them this writing sample. It is crucial to optimize word embedding hyperparameters for precise hypothesis synthesis. This sentence comes from a piece of work from a specialized subject area called natural language processing. Unless your friends are extremely familiar with that subject area, they may ask, optimize what? Do you optimize a word that is embedding hyperparameters? So embedding really is an action? The answer is no. You actually want to optimize hyperparameters of word embedding. How many could have guessed that? But when you put it this way, your friends will at least understand the general structure of the sentence even if they do not understand what hyperparameters are or word embedding means. But now they can at least ask follow-up questions to clarify that. We can make it even more convenient by putting a hyphen between word and embedding. So it really looks like one word. Likewise, they may also ask, precise hypothesis synthesis? What is precise? Is it the hypothesis or the synthesis? We actually mean to say precise synthesis of hypothesis and that will clarify it for them. So it appears there are two ways to write, a confusing way and the clear way. The confusion arises when we use what we call noun clusters. Often we use extra words to describe another. In English grammar we say that these extra words modify that other word. So there are various ways we can modify a noun. We can modify a noun by attaching one or more adjectives. For example, clear blue sky. What kind of sky? Clear blue sky. Both clear and blue are adjectives. Because there is only one noun, that is sky, we clearly know that both these adjectives, clear and blue, modify the noun sky. There is no confusion. We can also use an adjective and a noun to describe another noun. For example, high blood flow. Which flow? Blood flow. Blood is another noun. What kind of blood flow? A high blood flow. High is an adjective there. One can argue that even this cluster of words is confusing. After all, it is possible to interpret high blood flow either as flow of high blood or high flow of blood. However, flow of high blood does not make sense, whereas high flow of blood makes the same sense as high blood flow. The reason is that blood flow is a commonly known term. In fact, According to some unabridged dictionaries, blood flow really is one word or one noun. Because this is so, we need not rewrite blood flow as flow of blood. However, note that not all combinations of a noun and an adjective are that clear, especially for those readers who do not understand the topic of discussion very well. Therefore, as discussed earlier, precise hypothesis synthesis confuses some readers. Similarly, when two or more nouns modify a third noun, it can make it hard to read. We have discussed word embedding hyperparameters. Another example is Midlands Car Factory Trade Union Committee. You may be able to make sense of it, but is it easy to read? Notice options 2 and 3 on this slide are examples of noun clusters, or what we also call noun stacks. So how do we make noun clusters more readable? The answer is, open them up. 
So there are a few tricks that we can use to open up or untangle noun clusters so they read better. These are rewrite the noun cluster by starting from the end, that is write the last noun first, then add prepositions as necessary and start placing other nouns along the way. If the original cluster had an adjective, now place it next to the noun that you intend to modify. Also add articles, that is a, an, or the, in your revised writing as appropriate. Sometimes it helps to convert one of the nouns into a verb. We shall see an example of that on the next slide. Finally, sometimes two or even three nouns make better sense together because they are commonly understood together. In that case, leave them together. As you consciously work with noun clusters now, you may discover some other useful tricks as well, either through experience or as advice from other sources. Please share that advice with fellow learners by commenting underneath this video. So let us practice the rules we discussed on the last slide. First example is ocean depth variability. Let us start from the end, so we put variability at the start and then complete as variability of the depth of the ocean. Of is a preposition and the or the are the articles. But perhaps ocean depth together makes better sense, in which case we leave it so and only rewrite variability of, open, of ocean depth or variability of the ocean depth. The next example is business process improvement methodologies. Again, we rewrite by starting with the last noun. So now we have methodologies that improve business process. Notice here we converted a noun improvement into a verb improve and also added that. Or perhaps if we are only writing for an audience that uses the triplet of business process improvement all the time, we can leave it together and maybe our audience can read it more easily that way. Even in such cases, it is a good idea to first introduce the term in its untangled form and state that we are going to use the clustered notation from there onwards. In statistical machine learning theory, statistical is an adjective and it is unclear as to whether it modifies machine, machine learning or machine learning theory. It turns out that machine learning is a field of science. It is very popular these days, by the way, so Google it, Google it if you're not familiar with it. Therefore, we can rewrite it as theory of statistical machine learning or statistical theory of machine learning. Notice how the adjective statistical is placed in each of those two rewrites and how that changes the meaning. When we open up noun clusters, the rewrites are longer. That is okay because our objective is to be clear and not necessarily to be brief. Sometimes we become so familiar with a phenomenon that we develop shorter descriptions for it. And in the process we omit some crucial nouns. That is okay for us, but not for others who are not as familiar with that phenomenon and the language around it. Consider this. To assess for the zero drift, we checked each catheter. Zero drift? Do we imply no drift? Actually, what we mean is drift of the zero point. So the adjective zero modifies the noun point, but earlier that noun was missing altogether and that confused the readers. Only the experts understand such pieces of writing, but not others. Therefore, we must insert the missing noun if we wish a broader audience to understand what we mean. Remember, during our writing careers, we may have to write for different audiences. For example, senior management, our colleagues, our customers, or even government, or perhaps one large and diverse audience, that is general public. If we only know how to communicate to a select audience, our influence remains limited. And even then, we may have to communicate several times before we manage to convey our intent precisely. 
By practicing good writing skills, we can speak to a much larger audience. That buys us influence. So that concludes the lesson, but here's some homework for you. First homework is to find some noun clusters from something that you read or write and correct them so others who are unfamiliar with that kind of work can also understand it. Best is to show those noun clusters to a friend or family member who does not understand them. See if they can easily understand the general sentence structure without multiple passes through it. And if not, rewrite the noun clusters and check if they now make better sense. Also share your findings in the comment section below this video. Exercise 2 asks you to untangle some noun clusters. However, you can also use this exercise to refresh your understanding of techniques from previous videos on making simple and direct sentences. For example, for exercise 2.2, the one at the bottom of the slide, is the action in the verb? Also, what is the topic of the sentence and is it in the subject? If you wish to attend the previous lessons, links to their videos are given in the description below this video. The third exercise is an example of where the noun being modified is missing. Find it and rewrite. So that's it for today. In the next video, we shall discuss the next characteristic of simple and direct sentences, that is write short sentences. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your feedback, answers, and discussions under the video. That way, even if you are unsure of your answers, others can help you with their feedback. Also, if you wish to be notified of the next video and you have not yet subscribed to this channel, press subscribe under this video. And once you do that, the red subscribe button, however it appears on your screen, turns gray. Some people complain that they miss notifications despite subscribing repeatedly. Note, subscribing twice unsubscribes you and the gray button turns red again. So do not subscribe if you have already subscribed. Also, when you subscribe, a bell icon will appear. Press that as well, so it turns into a ringing bell. However, do not press it again if you, already done it, if you have already done it. Otherwise, notifications will switch off. Thank you and see you in the next video.